Well, they're not oddballs, you know, in our world and another in the spirit, no, in the no, they're not. I'm talking about the world view. Yeah, of no, them, no, you know, I, I, we are all strange. But, and and a lot of these people, they view themselves as oddballs, you know, as I have, and uh, mm-hmm. that's not the way to look at it, folks. The way we have to look at it is that, look. If we're in the world, we're just like from another planet, you know. If if, if you've ever seen a picture, uh, there, there are stories about angels that fall to Earth or spacemen that fall to Earth or something. And then they're horribly mistreated, the story goes. And then they go back to their planet, you know, wounded. It's kind of like anything that's different, anything that doesn't conform. If, if you belong to oh, God, sure. if, you, if you belong to God at all, usually it's from an early age. And, you know, or it's from the way you were made when you came out of the womb you were just like that you know from from the foundation mm-hmm. of the world you're you the world will not accept you from day one and a lot of the people like this don't survive but I, you, you know god just is gonna he's doing this to kind of put it back in their face that not everybody is created to to worship the world or material things or the material realm it's not it's not material things it's really ultimately about power personal power Mm-hmm. And, but, it's about recognizing and serving God. That's some of us were created for that. You, I remember you talked about it once that, that yeah. there's a light in your soul when you're born if you're chosen of God, and the enemy can see that light whether you see it or not. Yes. And others around you that are influenced by the enemy see that light, even if it's a small flicker. It's there. Right. It's it's a part of what uh, my next podcast, Eternity in the Heart. I'm going to talk a little bit about that, uh, be and good. it's there. It's there, and even if it's occluded by, you know, bad behavior and being upset, being uncomfortable, acting up, being self-destructive, which most of us can relate to, uh, you know, and 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 or you know, and all those things, uh, the light is still there, and they still attack. They attack that light. They attack what's in you, hoping yes. to convince you. And the, what I tell them is this: Please listen out there. You can't make anyone different than the way they were made, you know? People are made like this. And yes. you can't, I don't care how much you put them in slavery. I know one guy, they worked on him for, I don't know, five years. And it didn't take. You cannot be a Satanist if you weren't made that way, even if you do all the bad things they do. Like, okay, you you shoot somebody. You have... Uh, irrational, perverted sex or something. You you hurt some other people emotionally. You do all the things they want you to do to join their club. And who would want to do that And once you know what it's all about? But there are plenty of people who are, they, they get to Hollywood or somewhere and they just want to jump in. But someone that's made a certain way, you can't make, they can do all those things, jump through all those hoops, pledge the allegiance to Satan daily, do what the witches tell them to do, uh, you know, get all kinds of even, you know, dabble in the occult, do all this stuff, and still it won't take. That's right. It's because God will pull out his own, and, and he, there's, there's some kind of a shield that he has that covers his own. I remember when I got pulled out. I was, I was as bad as anybody. I stole my first car at 14, and okay. uh, <clears throat> I was every bit of a, of a punk, and uh, I wound up in a jail cell. And God miraculously took me uh, right then in a spectacular way. Mm-hmm. And uh, even though it's been a, up and down on my part, God has never, never faltered, never wavered, always oh, been there. And it's, it's, it's that steadiness of God and, and that faithfulness of God mm-hmm. and understanding that that makes me understand back to what we were originally talking about, the faithfulness of God towards Israel, towards Abraham. Yeah. Uh, it, it's all a part of the same thing. If you know God, you understand the faithfulness of God is one of his, his apt attributes, and it simply does not change. It, yeah, it doesn't change. And so what the Satanists have to understand, I'm sure in prison you found a lot of lambs in there, right? <laughs> well, I wasn't actually in prison, but uh, uh, there were a lot of people that uh, get Jesus in jail. That happens quite often. Uh, but... Uh, I, I just I went to the workhouse, so my 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 thing wasn't quite as bad as that. It was more just punkish kind of stuff. But uh, you know, there are people. I, I have met people that have come out of prison. I met someone I was working out on the reservation uh, in South Dakota, and uh, 
there are people that God touches, and he puts them in prison because he has to isolate them from perhaps the surroundings they were in Mm -hmm. and degradate them clearly to where they can see no other way out. And sometimes that's what it takes. Yeah, it's harsh. It's it's a harsh reality, but there is something about... uh you know the 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 uh, incarceration. I know Richard Wormbrand was incarcerated and tortured, and his mm-hmm. faith was strengthened all the more as a result. But the the I don't believe that he could have endured those sufferings at all had he not had faith. Oh, I, unquestionably, unquestionably, you're right. Uh, faith is uh, faith is the strongest substance we know. I mean, and if you have God faith, if God has a hold of you. Your faith is stronger than anything anyone can throw at you. It's simply unbreakable. They can break your body and they can kill you. They cannot destroy your faith. They can't even come close. Yeah, uh, it reminds me of a, a film I saw. I kind of fell asleep during. I have to watch it again. It, it was uh, I forget the name of it now, but basically, the, the this witch was trying to had captured these uh, these Christians. And what she was doing is wanting them to renounce their faith. And she hooked a guy up, like, to draw and quarter him. It was during the time of the Black Death in the Middle Ages. Mm-hmm. And had uh, uh, one horse on one leg and one arm, and then another horse going the other direction on one leg and one arm. And she goes, renounce, renounce. And when other people saw that he was about to be quartered, you know, um, another guy did renounce. He, he said, I, I give up all faith, and I give up, you know, he publicly renounced Jesus. Yeah. And then, and then she goes, you were the witch who was running everything, right? Doesn't that make sense? And she goes, you are free to go. And then he and left. And as soon as he was beyond the perimeter in the forest, uh, they killed him. Yes. <laughs> and I just guarantee, don't ever renounce your faith because if they get you, if it, and, and yes, that's run by the witches because they, they have the vested interest in getting you to renounce your faith. So if you Certainly. renounce, if, you know, if, if you renounce your faith, um, what they'll do is this. They'll take you out in the back and shoot you rather than shooting you right there in front of the rest of the people. That's kind of like the, the Nazi prison camps, you know, with all the, uh, the Jewish police that actually did the rounding up and, and, and keep, kept everybody under control for the Nazis. Many of them were taken out and killed at the, before they, uh, they could be discovered after they emptied the death camps. Right, they they're not going to let you live either way. So you might as well hold yeah. on to your faith. And then they finally dro- they they finally let the horses go and you know you see the arms and legs fly off and you know just you know not literally not so graphically, but you see that the guy was killed that way. And um you know ultimately it was just it what the movie showed is it just showed this you know tremendous war between these two forces, one represented by paganism and witches which has now become humanism. And the other, which is just, you know, God's way and faith, you know, the, the way of faith of the way, the truth and life of Christ. And uh, not that these Christians were not corrupt. They were and they were violent back in that time, too. But that but they were still of God in the sense that uh, though they might have been making mistakes and they were certainly being on trial, they did not belong to the pagans at all. Understood. They they might have been you know, violent yeah. at the time of the Crusades, but they weren't like mm-hmm. they weren't pagans. That's all I can tell you. They were they, they they were being hunted by the witches who ran paganism. Yes, yes, and 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 the idea that that they get others to announce their faith by watching one be executed is something that uh, I think is probably going to uh, happen again. And I don't know how near the future it is, but I, I suspect that's. Public executions of Christians will be used, uh, or believers. I, I don't really like the word Christian. Uh, no. Public execution of believers uh, at that time will, will probably encourage many who are half and half on the fence to flee their faith, and I think that's probably the objective. Well, I'll, I'll just tell you, if you get scared and publicly renounce your faith, they're going to shoot you in the head five minutes yes. later. They're going to anyway, blow your head off, okay? Or they're going to cut your head off. Nobody likes a turncoat. No, not so. You're gonna ha- you're gonna die one way or the other. So that's uh, you know, and that's and so that's what the movie was about. And I found that to, I found it interesting that someone would actually go to the extent of you know and all the expense of making a movie about this very issue. And you know, I think well, what, you know what what they were interested in is just showing that there are two sides in this world. You know, that's the biggest convincing argument that that believers have is unbelievers simply do not believe. There's a war going on. They simply refuse to see it or, or cannot see it. And that, that they are pawns within that war. They may even be combatants in that war. Yet, uh, 
Mm -hmm. Many of them simply don't see it. And it's a difficult sell. Right. The, 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 what is front and center is Christ. He's the stumbling block of the whole world. And everything revolves around him. All the yes. religions, the Muslims, the, the Jews, the Christians, the, uh, the Buddhists, the, the, uh, the, the communists, the, you know, the Hindus, everything revolves around Christ, the whole world. And, um, you know, anything that is not Christ would be antichrist. Mm-hmm. And then devolve to paganism, to the, you know, that would be layered over with, say, a religion. So you'd have a religion, and, and they'd say, well, isn't Christianity a pagan religion? And the thing is, is, yeah, yeah, but how many Christians, how many true Christians, let's say, are believers, if you will? How many real believers are there in the Christian church today? There's very few, I think. Uh, most, uh, most of us have been driven out. Uh, I think that the Christian Church, if you look at the Christian Church, is a form of paganism, clearly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and while I do think there are probably still some saved in the Church, I think uh, I think those people are in grave, grave spiritual danger. And as times draw to a close, I think they're in very great physical peril as well. Yeah, because they will be sold out by the non-believers who run the whole thing. Certainly, you can't you can't be a pastor today unless you're one of them. I mean, that's just an unfortunate reality and and i know these pastors will look at me and say you're absolutely insane i believe in god i believe in jesus uh you know here's the nicene creed and i believe the bible's the word of god and how dare you speak to me like that satan believes all of that <laughs> you can't win an argument with these people i it, it, no you can't I, I don't argue with them anymore uh i yeah. just i just let it go you know and, and and i walk away i just i get frustrated sometimes when i try and argue with them uh uh you know, so I just, you know, say, well, you know, you, you believe what you want, that there's consequences to beliefs, and uh, I let it go. Well, we had our friend uh, John Norton, who jo- joins us every week uh, from the desert of Southern California, and he, he one time went on a campaign to evangelize pastors into the faith. He said I that bet that was fun. He said uh, he uh, said that went over like a lead balloon. That did not oh, work. He said that ministry did not take off. <laughs> No, I was going to say that would be a tough sell. I bet he thought, he, it, the whole program was so that it, pastors too could actually, you know, join the faith of Jesus Christ for once. Pastors have had to blind their eyes to so many things that uh, I'm not sure that very many of them can even open those eyes again. And the, the spirit has been so seared. You know, when you when you reject God and you turn down God and, and you begin preaching a lie and doing all of these things, your spirit becomes so seared and so scarred that I'm not sure there's an entryway left for God to get back into you. Uh, I'm just not sure about that. I, I leave it in God's hands. He's much better qualified than I am on that. But I think it is difficult. Could it be that uh, the Lord is really, you know, gathering his own from outside re- organized religion in a way? And um, I believe that 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 he'll have a that. a big remnant. I mean, he'll have a big, you know, he'll have quite a harvest, despite you know the world, you know, campaign against uh, the true faith because the true faith means separation, and separation means you're a target. They don't want yes. anyone separate from anything. They want it ever, like you say, all inclusive. So when someone separates themselves out. They are seen as the enemy, and let's go get them. You know, there's that attitude right there. They want to go get them. I think that's why God tends to isolate his, his sheep. I think his lambs are isolated. Uh, I think they're protected. I know that I'm covered with the shield of God. Mm. Uh, he's put me here. I, there are things that happen all around here. Nothing happens to me. God takes care of, of his own. Uh, yeah, but you're not about to, you know, go put yourself in a situation where they're they're just teeming and seething, and there they are. You know, you'd go into one no. of their their lairs and ju- say, "Will you please like me? I'm just a guy that's a God fearing guy that loves all people." And- oh no, I don't do that anymore. No, <laughs> you know, like everybody, I had my time where, where I struggled with uh, being isolated and being alone. But yeah. but I learned that being isolated with God is is not being alone. It's being fulfilled, and. Uh, my life, uh, I have I have joys and, and comforts and graces in my life that men would would give millions of dollars for that simply cannot be God. I love it. And uh, I love that. that. I love that statement you just made. 